everyone. I'm Kevin Nelson. Here's a look at what's going on this week in the news. We begin with news from the Vatican. Pope Francis named 15 new cardinal electors for the church, announcing the names after praying the Angelus on January 4th. Rome Reports takes a closer look at the new princes of the church. The Pope started off 2015 by announcing the list of soon-to-be cardinals. They include 15 bishops and archbishops from 14 different countries. In addition to their roles back at home, cardinals are the Pope's main advisors. The Pope's picks are significant for many reasons, especially since it includes countries that have never had a cardinal or nations with a Christian minority, from Vietnam all the way to Ethiopia. The list includes Dominique Mamberti, who serves as the prefect of the Apostolic Signatura. In fact, he is the only new cardinal named from within the Roman Curia. From New Zealand, there's John Achelli Du, who serves as the Archbishop of Wellington. The Archbishop of Morelia, Mexico, Alberto Suarez Inda, is also listed. From the Tonga Islands, there's Soana Patita Paini Mafi who at 53 years old will be the youngest in the College of Cardinals. The represented countries also include Italy, Thailand, Portugal, Uruguay, Spain, Panama, and Cape Verde. The list breaks down to five new cardinals from Europe, three from Asia, another three from Latin America, two from Africa, and two from Oceania. There are no new cardinals from the U.S. or Canada. In addition to the 15 new cardinals, another five retired archbishops will also be created cardinals by Pope Francis, but they will not be cardinal electors, meaning they will not vote in an eventual conclave. The nominees, though, are not officially cardinals just yet. They will take on their new roles during a consistory held on Saturday, February 14th in the Vatican. Looking out news from around the country, a statement released by the Archdiocese of Chicago said retired Archbishop Cardinal Francis George has been dropped from a clinical drug trial to treat his cancer after it was shown the treatment was not working for him. Cardinal George was first diagnosed with bladder cancer in 2006 and had a recurrence of cancer announced in 2012. The clinical trial began in August. The statement said that although the antibody drug was not effective on the Cardinal, physicians overseeing treatment assured him that the information gathered during the trial will benefit others. The statement said cancer had not spread to any vital organs. The Archdiocese said the Cardinal is at peace, but counts on everyone's prayers that he might be of service to the Lord and his church in the time left to him. Cardinal George retired in September and was succeeded by Archbishop Blaise Supich. In news now from around the world, final preparations are underway for Pope Francis' trip to the Philippines, January 15th through the 19th. Cardinal Luis Antonio Tegli, the Archbishop of Manila, talks about the main reasons the Pope is visiting the region. The bishops of the Philippines proposed to the Holy Father that this visit be uh, in a way two-pronged. First is to show the church's uh, solidarity uh, with the victims, especially of the uh, Typhoon uh, Haiyan. While efforts to uh, reconstruct and to rehabilitate not only communities but lives and dreams uh, has been uh, uh, progressing you know uh, people still uh, would be greatly helped by uh, the manifestation of compassion and solidarity especially coming from the Pope the second is uh, we hope that the visit of the Pope would uh, uh, urge us on in our missionary uh, calling, not only within the Philippines, but also in Asia. And finally in the news, the Vatican is looking for women to share their experiences living in modern-day society. The Pontifical Council for Culture has created this project to further the discussion of womanhood in the 21st century. Rome Reports has more. 
It's a way to listen to what women have to say. This is the purpose of a new Vatican campaign titled Life of Women. It was launched by the Pontifical Council for Culture to look into the strengths and challenges women face in modern-day society, everything from their faith to simply being a woman. It follows Pope Francis's call of recognizing the role of women. It goes even further because it reflects the call of our time of giving women the role and place they deserve. The Vatican is calling on women to share their concerns, hopes and experiences by posting a short video or even a picture on social media under the hashtag Life of Women. We're seeing a transformation that's having a direct effect on women and culture. So the Council thought that the best way for females to share this experience is through images and storytelling. In a meeting to be held in February, some of the most moving accounts will be shared with bishops and cardinals to further the discussion of womanhood in the 21st century. And that is all the information we have for you this time. With Kevin Nelson, don't forget you can keep up to date on Catholic news throughout the week with Catholic News Break right here on the Catholic TV Network.